Very often on the channel, we get asked whether to go for a full power e-mounted bike or a lesser power one, a heavyweight versus a lightweight. But also, what is the range on the lower powered e-bike compared to the higher power one? And to answer that question, here we have the Canyon Spectral on with an EP8 motor versus the diminutive or bare rise with a 360 watt hour battery, which would have been small even a decade ago. However, because the EP8 RS motor has got less power, it therefore needs a smaller capacity battery. So we've got 60 newton meters up against 85, 360 watt hours versus 630. So what we have in essence is uh, a Land Rover with a big tank versus a Peugeot 106 with a little tank. Uh, well, not quite like that, but I'm sure you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. Uh, what we're gonna do today is ride the both bikes around exactly the same loop, a mix of trail, downhill, techie climbs, fire climbs. Um, and in the same mode, in trail mode, I'm gonna see which one I'm gonna push on first. Or in other words, which one runs out of battery and conks out first. So I'm just about to head out uh, for my first run. Now I'm gonna take the Orbea Rise with the EP8 RS first because I'm thinking with the lesser torque, that's gonna to demand a little bit more of my energy. Um, but I wanna point out the conditions today. It's super heavy conditions. So that's gonna have a massive effect uh, on the drain of the battery. Obviously, what would happen in the summer on the same track would be vastly different to what we're doing today. Um, so, you can probably factor in, in the final results, it's gonna be a lot more when it comes to range. Um, but common sense as well might actually tell you that uh, we're looking at 630 watt hours, 85 newton meters versus 360 and 60 newton meters. I'm thinking common sense is gonna say that the EP8 on the Spectral is gonna go way further. But I've never done this before, so there's only one way you're gonna find it out, and that's by getting stuck in. Technique for riding mud and rocks on the e-bike is usually about speed, so oh, pretty good though, pretty good. This really is a substantial climb and whilst we're on the business of discussing energy consumption, remember that as you get up these climbs on the lesser powered EP8 RS, you will be using a lot more energy. So that's gonna factor into the overall result. Oh, that's it, that's it. We're out, we are out of juice, <laughs> thankfully. Brand, thankfully Brandon is actually there and also thankfully I've designed this route so that we've got a fire road for the last uh, section so the cool thing with the EP8 motors both the EP8 and the EP8 RS is that you can still pedal them pedal them when you've got no power so uh, I've got no worries about getting back home so from 360 watt hours of battery and 60 newton meters of torque to 630 watt hours of battery and 85 newton meters of torque. Uh, now I'm actually quite surprised of the distance that we went on the Orbea Rise. Is that a good distance or a bad distance? Well, you'll find out uh, in a few minutes time. It's time now though uh, for the Spectral. So I've had a coffee, I'm suitably refreshed and I'm mad for it.
Now on the EP8 motor, a lot more momentum, less of your own energy being used. But the question is how much of that 630 watt hour battery is being consumed? Well, as you might be able to tell, I'm now out of juice. Um, but to be honest, it's not really that bad. I mean, I wouldn't go encouraging you to ride mountain bikes or e-mountain bikes without a battery. But what is interesting is the fact that on the EPA motor, you went from one bar to red to zero a little bit quicker than on the EPA to RS. I think the RS does give you a little bit more warning. But two amazing groups then. Now I'm going to go back home, get the coffee on, get my Garmin plugged in. We've got all the data on there. The height up, height down, heart rate, calories, if you're into that kind of thing. And um, see what the exact numbers are. Just a bit more hell to go. Out on the trail, the Spectral with a new Shimano EP8 made light work of the heavy winter conditions and conquered even the most slippy single track climbs. With an average speed of 10.2 mile an hour, the Canyon completed the loop in one hour, 25 minutes. The heart rate comparisons of the two bikes must be interesting reading, as I would surely be using much more of my motor on the Orbea. With an average of 116 beats per minute and a maximum of 146, I would spend most of my time in zone three for this ride. But the all important distance and climbing details. Well, up I went 2,736 feet and down 2,510 feet. The route was 14.58 miles until I ran out of juice and I used 981 calories. Your Bayer was significantly slower across the loop, 7.2 miles per hour, and taking a total time of 1 hour 51 minutes. The heart rate, as expected, was a lot higher on the Orbea, 126 beats per minute average and 148 max, but more importantly, a significant amount more time in zone two. So the all important data on the climbing, 3,015 feet of climbing and 2,808 feet of descending, a total of 15.76 miles and 1,365 calories. My conclusions from this is that it shows I really needed to try a little bit harder on the spectral in terms of heart rate. And that even though the Orbea had almost half the battery capacity, it didn't half give you some great range. It's just that with a heavier rider, it couldn't quite punch out some of the slippy stuff every time. Wow, what a day, what a physical day, what a fun day. Um, sorry, I gotta have a stick to do this. Uh, I cannot believe how close these two bikes were uh, in terms of the range. Um, I want to point out the conditions today were incredibly heavy going. So in summer hard pack conditions, the range of these both bikes is going to be significantly more. Uh, when it comes down to the distance and the time, now the Orbea did go slightly further, but you have to remember that I did have to push the bike up some of those technical climbs. So you need to factor that into the equation. So overall, I think they were pretty much equal. When it comes down to the time, a bit 20 minutes slower on the Orbea rise compared to the Spectral. Uh, so some people would argue that actually that's 20 minutes more riding. Uh, but linked to that as well is the fact that your heart rate is going to be a little bit higher on the 60 Nm Orbea rise with the EP8 RS motor compared to the EP8 motor on the Spectral on. I think my heart rate was, the average heart rate was about 10 beats per minute higher on the Orbea bike. Um, but guys, I mean, 3,000 feet of climbing and descending in the winter on both these bikes, a load of fun. Um, but very much two different tools for different jobs. I think the Orbea Rise certainly is an animal in dry conditions. It does come a little bit unstuck in the conditions where you need that little bit of momentum to get you up to those technical climbs. So in that respect, the torque on, sorry, the spectral on, there is a torque on as well, uh, is the tool for the job. Uh, I think this is definitely a video we will be revisiting in the future uh, in dry conditions. And uh, 
So in the meantime, uh, don't forget to subscribe to EMBN for more electric mountain bike content. Uh, give a thumbs up if you like this video and we'll see you in hopefully some dry conditions next time.